Froelich Gladstone Rainey was an American anthropologist. A master of narrative prose, he was the type of ancient specialist anyone in the field would have relished working with. Regarding the Arctic, he put it to the National History Museum as follows, quote, We have now found an Arctic metropolis, many times larger than anything previously thought possible in this part of the world, and once inhabited by a people whose material culture differed markedly from that of the Eskimos as we know them. He continues, One morning in the June of 1940, when Magnus Markey and I had returned to begin the second season of digging at Iputak, we soon became aware of the astonishing extent of these ruins. We could see long avenues of yellow squares, marking the ancient buildings, spanning east and west for well over a mile. Over the next several days, we hurriedly attempted to chart these ruins before they all became hidden once more. We eventually realized that more than 600 buildings would have once stood on this ancient site, a site well over a mile in length." End quote. Dated at many thousands of years old, you have to wonder, why is not more publicity shared regarding these mysterious people? Sophisticated objects have been unearthed, which demonstrate a far more complex civilization than the proto-Eskimo culture academia would have you believe inhabited the area. The architectural abilities of this mysterious group also far exceeds the capabilities of other ancient cultures, even as far as Mexico. The largest ancient settlement ever found to have existed in Alaska, it was even bigger than any Arctic coastal village in Alaska or Canada today. The town of Iputak would have once been home to more than 8,000 people. Just who were the Iputak people? How did they survive so successfully within an Arctic climate many thousands of years ago? Are we looking at a culture far older than we are told? Regardless, one reason to conceal such a fact would be the Bering Strait hypothesis, a hypothesis conveniently crucial to evolution theory and one which numerous people have lost their careers over. Dr. Scott Elias at the Colorado Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, quote, As far as orthodox scholarship is concerned, the validity of the Bering Land Bridge route is not up for debate. Regardless of such cult rhetoric, the Iputak people are certainly an interesting and controversial bunch, and worthy of future study. We will keep you posted. Alaska, America's largest and most sparsely populated state, although that may not have always been the case. We have previously covered many compelling accounts, reports, excavations, even photographs of this mysterious race. It seems no matter where you turn within controversial archaeological fields, you will inevitably come across reports of giants. They even made it to the notoriously remote Polynesian island better known as Easter. Tales of giants with two rows of teeth, giants with red hair, blonde hair, moon eyes, and even giants from Alaska. Just who were these world-traversing ancient Goliaths? Were all these different tribes related? Were they responsible for the building of many of the ancient structures found around the world, where the placement of huge megalithic blocks still perplexes us to this day? Atlan is known as the Gold District of Alaska and James L. Perkinson owned a piece of it. An extremely wealthy American miner who found something remarkable in his land, something so impressive, he graciously went to the San Francisco Call newspaper personally to report his findings. Two weeks prior, the first excavations were being made for a tunnel which unfortunately broke through into a layer of an ancient burial ground. Within were seven gigantic skeletons. One was a mere seven feet in height yet the others were of a tremendously greater stature, some over 10 feet tall. The layer is at a high altitude, and the ground is half frozen, making for great preservation chances," said Perkinson. He believed that many more giants were buried there, as the ones he unearthed were lying comparatively close together. The skeletons were unusually well-formed, but one unique feature was the size of the bones, the forearms were enormous in comparison to usual people. Besides two of the skeletons were spears, rudely shaped and pointed with sharp stones. 
other pieces of stone and carved metal were found nearby. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be long before it all seemingly vanished. Regardless, this was a noble act by James L. Perkinson. It is sadly unknown just what did happen to the giants on James Land. This was a report made by James L. Perkinson to, and subsequently reported by, the San Francisco Call on November 18, 1900. It is now a well-known, heavily studied fact that the modern-day bird was once a very different-looking animal, evolution in the form of a radical transformational adaptation, forced upon them by gradual changes in the Earth's environment, from which they whence came that being the dinosaur. We now know this to be fact, thanks to modern technology. Our capability to now scan these fossils, some found remarkably well-preserved, still fortunately containing many things, which have allowed us to discover that dinosaurs had bird brains, or more accurately, birds have dinosaur brains. With current investigations even shining light upon the reality that many of these gigantic animals, including the T-Rex, once had manes made of feathers. This drastic change from the dinosaur, resulting in the vast array of creatures we see today, from the ostrich to the albatross, even to the commonly domesticated budgerigar. Yet they all share one common trait, a significant reduction in their size. Even animals which survived unchanged, such as the crocodile, still shrank considerably. This shrinking of said species having been demanded of them by environmental changes. Evolutionary adaptation, as we have covered in the past, is, in the channel's opinion, in its true sense, an adaptation of specific sets of vertebrate types, the true definition of species, not as Darwinian theory posits, of leaps between such. Thus, evolution witnessed within the animal kingdom is not indicative of a shared single ancestry, but inseparable branching from specific vertebrae or phyla groups, never proven to have leaped from one to another. As such, modern-day birds could in fact be seen as the product of de-evolutionary adaptation, possibly derived from cataclysm, which deprived them of the resources needed to remain at such gigantic sizes. The reason for this digression is the channel's postulation of this same process, having once possibly occurred to Homo sapiens also. Could this explain why some of the oldest ruins are also some of the most advanced? With many remaining beyond the reach of modern man's ability to understand them, is it possible that man once had a much higher intellect than us today, due to a far greater sized cranium? Simply put, were we once giants, just as modern-day birds were once dinosaurs? Legends and accounts of ancient giants can be found all over the world, also featuring in many ancient religious teachings. Additionally, many of the still unexplained sites of Earth regularly feature doorways many feet, sometimes even meters above that which is required by and for humans of our modern scale. The Terracotta Army, for example, is believed by many independent researchers, including Mystery History, to have been made by a lost civilization, and their average height, intriguingly, is much taller than modern man. Many accounts exist of giants, which share similar descriptive characteristics. Red hair, double rowed teeth, elongated skulls, etc. With many accounts of red-headed giant remains actually discovered and excavated all over the world, yet often all that survives of these reported events is a small news article, regularly noting Smithsonian involvement in said recoveries, yet seemingly and conveniently always slipping away from the public domain. Lovelock Cave being another example, locals tell of it once being the home of a group of red-headed giants which was eventually blocked and the giants burnt alive, a giant handprint still visible on a rock in the cave, presumably made by one of these individuals during their unpleasant demise. Yet what has to be the most compelling piece of evidence, fortunately still in view to suggest giants did indeed once exist, are footprints found all over the globe, 
once laid down upon sediment, now fossilized into solid stone. These footprints range in size up to a few meters in length, indicating that humans, at some point in the distant past, may have been even larger than many dinosaur species. We find the evidence to support the hypothesis of giant ancient humans highly compelling.